Hey guys, welcome to the channel. And glad you guys all made it. Every day is a blessing, right? And it looks like they got Jonathan Kleck's channel. It's gone. One of you had mentioned that you couldn't find it. And so I looked it up and I had to go into the Wayback Machine, obviously. Said it wasn't available. So it's gone. Now I've had some issues with some of his doctrines in the past, but you never want to see something like this happen, okay? Where someone loses their entire channel, especially channels that claim to believe in God, right? And that are talk about his son and the gospel. And especially channels that are clearly not breaking YouTube's rules, but it almost feels as though they've been targeted now, it's very hard to prove that. Obviously, if, if this was easy to prove, lots and lots of people would be getting attorneys and, and suing them. But unfortunately, the way that the rules are set up in this reality, it's very difficult to stay on YouTube if you're saying things that are against the powers that be. And if you stand up for the Most High and His Son. And at this point, it's pretty clear they don't want really anybody talking about God on their platform and they're looking for reasons to take people down and i'm starting to wonder you know how long will it be before the chacked feckers start chacked fecking belief in god when is that coming they're already doing it with other things and pretty soon they will start saying things about the bible about how it was you know they'll try to convince people that it's not inspired that it was written by men and all these other things to try to discredit the Bible. And pretty soon you'll start seeing Chacked Fecker articles on all this stuff. So, sorry to see that happen, Jonathan. Like I said, I don't believe, you know, agree with some of your doctrines, but you just shouldn't have this happen to you. And um, uh, we'll see what happens from here. Now, as our channel evolves, we will be pulling down videos from time to time in order to protect the channel. But um, also understand that we will make sure and have those all backed up and duplicated on Odyssey. So don't worry if you go and the video has been pulled down, just go to Odyssey. There's a duplicate version of every single video on this channel copied on Odyssey. So just go there and you will find it. And that will help preserve our voice here on YouTube. Now, Let's take a look at this new film called Infinite. And it, of course, is a reincarnation film. And so I grabbed all these screenshots from it. I watched it the other day. I found a copy of it online. And let's talk about reincarnation for a minute. Because there's plenty of new age channels out there that believe in reincarnation. Some of them are even in the truth community with pretty large followings. And for those of you that want to believe in that, uh, there are channels to watch. I don't particularly believe in reincarnation because I, f I believe that it is based on a couple of scriptures in the Bible. Uh, one where Jesus says something to the effect that he was Elijah or is Elijah. And that's pretty much the only scripture that really talks about reincarnation. And the other point that reincarnation believers try to make is that when Jesus was resurrected, he was resurrected into a different body and they call that reincarnation. But here's the problem and you got to use critical thinking with this. The fact that the disciples were in shock and did not recognize Jesus or believe that he was Jesus debunks the very idea of reincarnation. Because if Jesus, don't you think that would be like a principal teaching that he would have made sure and discussed with his closest followers while he was here on earth? Wouldn't he have explained to them, look, you're going to come back in a different body and I, you know, and I will be raised again. They wouldn't have been in shock to see Jesus in a different body if Jesus had taught them. What many people believe is a fundamental belief system that we are reincarnated. 
This is why I don't believe in reincarnation because the disciples did not know it was him. They didn't even know what the concept was that Jesus could have come back in a different body, which means that Jesus did not tell them about it. And them being Jesus' closest followers, you think he would have filled them in on that. He told them everything else they needed to know moving forward. He gave them the proper tools and Jesus would not have left something so major out of their teaching. Okay, this is where you have to use critical thinking because as I said, there are a few, just two um, scriptures that seem to suggest that reincarnation could be a possibility. Jesus referring to himself as Elijah was one. So, if there was such a thing as reincarnation, the conversation would have probably went something like this. Hey dudes, we got several chances to get this right before I come back again, so don't feel so bad if you got a martyr out. Right? But that wasn't the case. So obviously Jesus never had that conversation because they were so shocked to see him. And did not recognize him, nor did they believe. And in fact, Thomas doubted it and had to be shown proof, did he not? Now, what is this Elijah business? And why would Jesus refer to him in that way, or himself in that way? Well, God and Jesus are different and special. They are on the next level of divinity, far outside of what we are as humans. Just like the devil can possess people, and that's like the negative version of being filled with something that's not your own, well, the Holy Spirit can fill people too. That's the light side or good version of someone being filled with the Spirit. And, and that connects them to God, or in, in God's case, in Jesus' case, this could connect them throughout history to the ancient patriarchs. And prophets, Elijah being one of them. But that's way different than every single person who ever lived, connected to God or not, reincarnating into new bodies after you die. That's not what the Bible says. Because if it said that, there would be many, 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 many examples. Would there not? The Bible would be clear about it. And it's simply not. Elijah and Jesus is the only example that we really have. So you got to use critical thinking when it comes to these kinds of doctrines. You can't just jump on a few scriptures and think, oh, this is the way it is. Now, here's what we do know. And this is where we get into this decode that I'm going to show you. Now, no one's seen this montage that I put together yet. You're going to see that this morning. But here's what we do know. We know that demons do jump from body to body. And they can transcend the human lifespan. By doing this. And this is what seems to me to be more likely to is what is happening. Reincarnation is a demonic trick. It's demons jumping into bodies saying that they remember past lives. Which they do. Right? Because they were in a body um, generations past. The end of their timeline doesn't end till the end of the entire timeline of human history. This is why Jesus did not condemn the demons to hell yet when he cast them out of the man and into the pigs. The demons also had superhuman strength. Why do you think that is? Because they've had a lot of practice, right? Possessing people down throughout history. Skill sets. And you see a lot of that take place in this film, Infinite. And now you're going to hear what you're going to hear first is the immortals. There's 500 of them. So this sounds exactly like some of the other films and TV series we've decoded. And they, there's this amount of these immortals, usually three to 500. And you're going to hear them tell the story of who they are and how they got there. Let me go in here and make sure we're together with you guys. Here's though we are. All right. Yes, body hopping. Thanks for that. All right, let's play this first part here. We call ourselves the infinite. Less than 500 souls from across the globe. 
all born with the ability to remember all our past lives. So we call ourselves the, uh, the, what did she say? <laughs> Hold on. The infinite. The infinite. We call ourselves the infinite. Less than 500 souls from across the globe. All born with the ability to remember all our past lives. So they can remember all their past lives. Here's, of course, the thumbnail for the series. And it's the Ouroboros, the owl eyes as well. We just talked about the Ouroboros yesterday because we decoded the Jägermeister ads from decades past. And so, of course, they're going to show you the hexagons. This is the hex that we're living in, the cube. And the skills we've learned in each of them. There are two groups within the infinites. Bathurst and the Nihilists, who just want the world to end. So there's these two groups. Now... What's up with these two factions? Well, in the film, they want you to believe that these are two sets of immortals battling it out till the end to save the world. One of the factions wants the world to end. The other wants to save it. And of course, that's the, the deception. There are no good demons. Okay, there's just demons. And they might pretend to be battling each other. But really, the end result is, is that they want as many of you do not believe in God as possible. So the bad immortals wish to end their reincarnation cycle and end the world by dissolving all of our DNA. And you're gonna what you're gonna hear next is that they're going to unwind the DNA. But before that, you're gonna hear her say they want to leave mankind better than they found them. Now, of course, this is double speak. Double meaning. Because what is better? What does better mean? Well, in their eyes, better is combining themselves with humans. That's what they believe is better. So it's double speak. And us, the believers, we believe that our gift is a responsibility. That it's up to us to leave humanity better off than we found it. Now, you're going to watch this bird here. I don't know what kind of bird it is. Uh, flying in a circle around the egg. Now, the egg is this world-ending device that they're trying to get control of each faction to either protect the world or destroy it with this egg. And the egg, what it does is when you activate it, it unwinds people's DNA, dissolving all living matter in the universe. <laughs> So I did the side-by-side -side from iPad Go 2 so that you could see the Orphic egg concept in the spinning around the egg. The serpent spins around the egg. This is a direct reference to the Orphic egg, unwinding or corrupting our DNA. The serpent wrapping around the seed of the woman, infecting the DNA. Now, very few people know that birds are reptiles. And this is why you have the bird flying around the egg instead of the snake. Reptiles lay eggs like birds, do they not? That's one very big clue that birds are reptiles. Feathered serpents, like Quetzalcoatl, right? Now, we've gone over the Orphic egg in detail over the years. And we've seen its imagery repeated over and over and over again in these decodes. The egg. The egg. The egg. Designed to kill every living thing on Earth. The Orphic Egg. Now, the Orphic Egg also links back to hermaphroditism, pan. All of these are mentioned in the Wikipedia page for the Orphic Egg, which makes it very clear that this is all about the serpent, right? And he wants to wrap himself around the egg of the woman. This is why you see the serpent depicted in the Garden of Eden wrapped around the tree. The tree bears fruit just like the womb. The womb, the fruit of the womb is what it's described of uh, as in the Bible. 
And so basically the serpent's wrapping himself around the tree. It attacks life at the source, DNA, unwinding the very fabric of existence. Unwinding the very fabric of existence. Unwinding. DNA. Unwinding the very fabric of existence. Every plant, every animal, every person. A neural network fired off like the 4th of July. What in there, Evan? What did you see? Your neural network fired off like the 4th of July. So they keep mentioning the 4th of July. We heard that again. Where else did we hear it? We heard it in Sweet Tooth. Okay. Remember, he shoots off the uh, the flare. And it, you know, it explodes like the 4th of July. And then also we saw her defense perimeter of the zoo popping off like the 4th of July. It was all fireworks. Oh, of course, we saw it in iPet Goat 2 as well. There's something about the 4th of July. And I'm starting to wonder. Is the 4th of July the midpoint for something else? We know that the 4th of July is about the halfway point in the calendar year. But what if there's something else? Now, 19 years ago, we had an event, as you guys all know. And we've been counting these 19-year cycles. So if this 4th of July is the middle of that 19-year cycle... That brings us to about 2038 to 2040, which is the end of the Purple Age of the Rainbow. Our rainbow timeline of world history that we showed you. And so after the purple, the rainbow goes back to red, does it not? Now, the word Odom, which sounds like Adam, the Hebrew word Odom, O-E-D-E-M, I believe it's spelled is it means red. That's what it means. So Adam was the pure red blood, the first creation of man. And of course, Jesus brought us back to perfection. So in that way, he is like Adam. He brought us back to perfection. He was the, the next, very next man born perfect in our reality. And through him, we have salvation. So you can almost look at Jesus as like the new Adam. Now, of course, it's so much, Jesus is so much more. But when you think about it, after we go through the Purple Age, it would go back to the red part of the spectrum of the rainbow being Jesus in his return. The pureness. Now, the 19 year cycle, of course, our benchmark would be blind 11, 2001. If we had 19 years, that brings us to blind 11, 2020, 19 years after the last event. But I'm, I'm wondering if somehow July 4th isn't fitting into this in some way, shape or form. Now, as you're going to see next in the film, the good guys, the quote unquote good guys, right? Try to hide the egg in their side. So he pierces his side and he puts the egg inside of his side. And of course, all this points back to Adam and Eve coming out of his side. But it also points to Jesus, whose side was pierced and water and blood came out. Much like a birth. First comes the water, the water breaks, then comes the blood. Watch. Now, many people believe that ribs that were described in the Bible and, you know, Adam's rib being removed, they actually believe that this could represent DNA. And I wouldn't disagree with that. But I also believe that the human body is, in fact, a model of these other structures. It's a nested model. In other words, it's a scale model. God built this reality in scale models, things within things. And I've always given you guys the example of the nest in the tree, right? A bird builds a nest in a tree and inside that nest is an egg. 
Well, the nest forms a spiral around the egg, and the nest sits in the tree, which bears fruit, which are more eggs. And inside the tree sits inside the ground, underneath the weather, which is spirals of storms, right? Going overhead, storms move in spirals. And within that, we are in the magnetic field, prison of this reality. So everything is things within things. And under the tree stands people who also have a crown on their head. We have a crown, we have limbs. We have a core or a trunk of our body, right? And we bear fruit, which are children. So when you look at the human rib cage, it probably represents something else. And that could be DNA on the micro level, our ribs being the macro level. Now we do know that Jesus had 12 disciples, which are your 12 ribs, but one of them was lost, leaving 11 because he was betrayed, right? So when Jesus' side was pierced, of course, the blood and water came out. And then we, all of us who believe in him, are born again in a new birth through him, almost like his side, so to speak. So all this is very interesting to me. And those are the things that I picked up from this film, Infinite. Now, what are we up to tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we're going to look at cicadas in the 19 year cycle. And I found some pretty amazing things about the cicadas. It's actually a 17 year cycle. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. A 17 year cycle of the cicadas. And we track them all the way back to 1715, Brood X. So I got some things pulled up for that for tomorrow's show. What else do we have here? Now, at a certain point, we'll probably do a show on these statues, these giant statues. I know many of you have asked me to look at these. Um, so I'll dig into that probably later in the week. We'll probably have a show for you guys like next week on that. But that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys today. So I hope everybody can come back for tomorrow's show. And let's go into the chat here. Someone ate a cicada. Yeah, you can actually eat them, apparently. Like in uh, Asia, they eat cicadas. They like roast them. They taste like asparagus, apparently. They don't bite. But uh, early on, the early people, the pilgrims, as a matter of fact, called cicadas locusts and they they believe that they were biblical so we'll talk about all that too okay let me go in the chat here for a little bit yes yeah, stay on the narrow path abc Yeah, they're like trillions at Tom. They're saying there's trillions of cicadas. Brood X is the largest, and that's why we're doing a show on this one. There's lots of hatches. Here's actually the map right here. We'll cover this in the show tomorrow. But uh, here are all the hatches. There are multiple hatches going on. I don't want to give the whole show away because I want to do it justice. But Brood X is in yellow here. This is the current hatch going on. It's the largest of all of them. And as you can see, it's centered around Washington, D.C., which is another reason why this is a special hatch. But as you can see, here is where it is. Pretty unbelievable. Now, I hadn't really learned about cicadas much because I grew up in California and they don't have them over there. So there's something different about the U.S. cicadas, and we'll get in that, into that in tomorrow's show. These 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 seventeen year hatches don't really occur in other parts of the world. They only really occur here for the most part. There are a few in other parts of the world, but mostly they are exclusive to the U.S. and specifically Washington D.C. And that should tell you something about them. All right. Now, if you guys have any comments about the cicadas that you want to put in the comment section of this show. That will help our research. I'm pretty much done with the show notes for tomorrow, but if you have anything else, I can add that to my show notes. Um, 
I'm learning that you guys are a treasure trove of information and that the, the way that the Holy Spirit works is all of us thinking together instead of just one person thinking they have all the answers, right? So I'm learning to really appreciate your guys' feedback. Okay. What I was looking for was some kind of connection to these birds, this, this bird die off and, and, um, you know, their eyes being closed and them going blind. So I went back 17 years to see if I f could find anything. I didn't really find anything. I did find an interesting Washington times article that was talking about cats and dogs who ate the cicadas actually got sick. So you'd probably don't want your cats and dogs fooling around with these cicadas as they come out of the ground. Let me pull that up because that's something that's probably important to cover today. So this is the Washington Times. And it says here, this was back in 2004 during the last hatch. Um, it says, while the emergency will be a bonanza for spring birds, dogs and cats have been known to get sick from over snacking on them. I don't know if that was common knowledge, but that's what they were saying 17 years ago. So that you guys, anyone who has uh, cats and dogs who lives in the Maryland, DC, I think Ohio is where they're hatching to. Let's look at this map again. Any of these states right here that are in yellow and you have cats and dogs, just be careful, okay? Because they might harm your cats or dogs. Interesting, huh? All right. What else do you guys have? Some people like the sound of the cicadas, Kathy, and some, some people don't. Um, makes you wonder, right? What's up with this number 17? It's a prime number. I think it's, uh, what is it, the seventh prime number? Or the fifth prime number? Let's look up the number 17, see if we can find any... Uh, Number 17. Probably should have saved this for tomorrow's show. But uh, it is a prime number. It is a sum of the first four prime numbers. Wow. So it's the fifth prime number. But it's the sum of the first four prime numbers. So that makes the number 17 very interesting. 17-year cycle. Interesting. The next prime is 19. Now we're on the 19th cycle of this Brood X. The first recorded hatch of Brood X was 1715. That was 19 cycles ago. So this is all very interesting. So I'll look through this number 17. We'll include that in tomorrow's show. Okay. Back in the chat. Autumn was born on the 17th. That's cool. All right. Okay, guys. I want to wish you a great day. Be saved if you haven't already. All the information that comes from this channel is an inspiration of the Son of God and the Holy Spirit. I don't take any of the credit for the amazing things that happen on this channel every single day. So um, if you want to give somebody the credit, give your life to Jesus. Yeshua. Yahushua. There are different ways that people say his name. So I love you guys and have a great day.